a bachelor bombshell. Welcome to an emergency pod, if you will, playing the field of Bachelor Podcast. I'm Ryan Field, a sports anchor at Eyewitness News, joined now by our usual friends, Jen Matarese from WABC in New York, our Bachelor Insider, as well as our Bachelor expert, Gina Sirico from KABC in Los Angeles. Those of you who are friends of the program, uh, first and foremost, we love you for being that. Uh, you'll notice that we are not in our typical Bachelor podcast studio. Uh, I am coming from you on vacation. Uh, Gina is out in Los Angeles. Jen is in New York. So uh, we've got all of our coasts covered, even some different continents covered, ladies. Uh, but we had to come together to talk about this. Uh, let's just call it what it is, a golden Bachelor bombshell. Gary and Teresa are done after barely three months of marriage. They called it quits. Uh, dissolve their marriage, as they said. And before we get to uh, hearing from the couple themselves, just your initial reaction, ladies, when you saw this go down, I, like the rest of Bachelor Nation, was shocked. I was floored. I was hoping it wasn't that, but then I was thinking of the alternatives. I mean, you don't want anyone to be sick or dying. You don't want anything like that to happen. So if there is a bombshell, I guess a breakup is one of the best case scenarios. But... Uh, you know, it made me sad to see the response from some people. Like, I don't know. I was a fan of them from the start. I really enjoyed them. And I think the people laughing at it and everything. I mean, we'll get into the reasons why, but I thought it was I thought it was sad that it ended this way. I agree. You know, um, being out here in L.A. gives me proximity to be able to chat with these bachelor couples and the the lead and and sometimes, you know, some of the women. and. So I've chatted with Gary many times and I actually saw them last week um, at an event um, for Hulu and for Hulu on Disney Plus. Um, they were they had just come from filming Celebrity Family Feud where they were playing and they were very happy. You know, I had said, you know, this is the first time I've seen you guys since, you know, the wedding, because the last time I saw them was literally at their wedding. And, you know, I said, how's married life? And, you know, Teresa was very quick to answer that she was happy. They were happy. They were having fun. They had just come from filming something great. So, you know, everything seemed fine. Um, but we do know that they haven't been living in the same house since they got married. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we can we can get into that. Um, but, yeah, it's shocking and sad. Sad. It's very sad because it's a couple that the nation, not just Bachelor Nation, but the country fell in love with. We talked about the popularity of the Golden Bachelor and how it was uh, kind of a breath of fresh air for a franchise that's been around for so many seasons and kind of dipping into a different dating pool, if you will. And I think it's, you know, it kind of they were thinking if anybody could find love, I think the prevailing thought was it was going to be Gary and Teresa based on not only what we saw on the show, but where they were in their lives in terms of their age, both in their 70s, both looking for love, maybe their last chance at love. And like so many other couples in today's society, it just didn't work. And they announced it in an exclusive interview with our good friend Juju Chang on Good Morning America. And this was the reason that they said, or I should say, this is what. Gary said to Juju and Teresa when they announced that they were going to be divorced. Teresa and I have had a number of heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and we've looked closely at our situation, our living situation, and so forth, and, and we've kind of come to the conclusion mutually mm -hmm. that it's probably time for us to um, dissolve our marriage. Get a divorce. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So they call it a dissolving of the marriage. Juju says you're getting divorced after just three months. And Jen, I think she was like a lot of us going, oh, man, I can't believe this happened. And very sad on top of that. I know. I loved watching their wedding. I loved the whole process. I loved how they were very open and sharing everything. And, you know, they had Christmas together with their families. Like, it just seemed really sweet. Like I thought that this could last. And, you know, obviously there's conversations they've had about where they want to live, what they want to do, um, whose grandkids they want to see at what, what time. And I think, honestly, I think that's probably the biggest thing that led to the downfall of their relationship is that Teresa's is very involved grandmother. 
very involved. And it seems like Gary's just, you know, very involved with his girls. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they, I think they just couldn't split their time up and get the travel thing down, but that's just. Yeah. And Gina, I mean, Gary lives in Indiana at his lake house. Teresa lives in New Jersey. There was talk of Gary moving to uh, New Jersey and they were looking at houses in South Carolina, but anybody that's been in a long distance relationship knows that being so far apart from each other is not easy. No, absolutely not. Um, And you would hear my, my question is always like, you guys talked about this beforehand. Is that one of the things that you talked about, you know, during the show and in the time that you had, you know, between the show stopping and the show airing and then the finale, like these are things that you would think that they would have worked out prior to like, if, I mean, and just as an example, you know, Joey and Kelsey, who we just spoke to, they immediately were like, yeah, I'm going to go to, he was like, I'm going to go to New Orleans. I'm going to stay there. Then we're going to move together to New York. They knew they had it planned out. Right. I don't know whether, I mean, look, we would assume, and I, I, we could have, sw- I could have sworn that they had had these conversations and I don't know, maybe after the wedding, there were other conversations where it was like, maybe I don't want to leave this house yet. Maybe I don't want to move to South Carolina. We don't know. Um, I, you know, obviously we can only speculate until we can get Gary and Teresa in here to have a conversation with us. Um, but we don't know, you know, talking and doing are two different things though. Cause sometimes something exactly. will sound like a great idea and you think, oh, yeah, I can handle that. I can do it. And then when you're actually doing it, it's like, oh, the execution is, is not great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, It's a lot exactly. of work and it's, it's, it takes a lot out of people and maybe at their point in their lives, they're just like, you know, I like you. I love you even, but Mm. let's just be friends no and and what you guys are saying is exactly right I mean listen they tied the knot on January 4th and here we are in mid-April this was uh, the shortest in terms of marriage of a bachelor couple uh, in the entire history of the series so you you know they don't want to have that designation but a couple of takeaways for me were the fact that they're still in love with each other and they're holding hands and they're smiling at each other And it almost seems like they're still the best of friends. And they said that they plan on being in each other's lives through all of this. They said they're going to continue to try to to try to find love with another person uh, while they're in each other's lives. And one of my favorite takeaways was when they told Juju that, you know, they're an inspiration. And they've heard from so many people who were in their 70s about the possibilities of still finding love. Here's what they had to say. I don't think we can tell you how many people told us that it gave them so much hope. We want none of that to change for anybody. And then hearing that, it's so heartwarming, it's sad, it's so many things, and maybe really the purpose of Gary and Teresa in the grand scheme of things was not only to give us this great show and a great wedding that aired on ABC, but maybe it really was to provide inspiration for so many people later in life who feel like they have no hope of finding love or finding someone that they can be in companion with for the rest of their lives. And even though it didn't necessarily work out with Gary and Teresa, it, they showed that, yes, you can still find love and that's still possible even in your 70s. Absolutely. I mean, it, it opened the door to dating for them. They, they now have the possibility in their mind that, you know, I can meet someone. If it didn't work out with this person, maybe it'll work out with somebody else. And it sounds like they could benefit from dating someone in their city or at least in their state. And, um, you know, I hope, I hope that Teresa is able to meet somebody nice because she seems like such a lovely lady. And, um, I would like to see both of them end up happy. Absolutely. You know, we've talked about it before. Um, all the women on, you know, when we've been talking about the golden bachelor all the women on the golden bachelor, um, are just lovely. And they have even said how this, experience has changed them and how they feel now like they're visible where it's a situation where when you reach a certain age and I'm full disclosure, I am closer to that age than I am of like Joey and Kelsey, whatever, (laughs) but like, which, which made me kind of understand and, and kind of, and, and really feel what they were saying more is you feel like you, like when you get us reach a certain age, you become invisible. And even Teresa had said it as well. You just, the show has made them feel like they were more visible, like to show that there's still so much they have to give. 
And I think that is the same thing with, with Gary and Teresa. Gary and Teresa both have, you know, they're smart. They have fun. They're vivacious, you know, although I will say full disclosure at this event, when we were, we were leaving to go back and edit and they were leaving to go back to their hotel and go to bed. That was like at 830. So, I mean, you know, (laughs) they were tired. It had been a lot. I'm just saying, but, but, you know what I mean? (laughs) But they had filmed things. They were at an amazing event, you know, so they, they, there is so much there. And I feel like it's good for the nation, Bachelor Nation, everyone who, you know, is a fan of the show to understand that love can happen at any time, any age, any place. I think that's a great message. I think that's the thing that Teresa was trying to get across when she was saying that, you know, so many people had come to them, you know, saying that they were, they inspired them. And I think that's important. And listen, 8.30 PM, 8.30 PM, that's a bedtime for even people my age. So listen, it can happen. You just don't have to be, you 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 don't have to be 7 to go to bed at 8.30. Work requires him to be up until 11. <laughs> Mentally, I'm asleep at 830. <laughs> Don't tell your boss of that. Don't tell them that. No, but I get it. Yeah, exactly. It's a little cat nap ready for the <laughs> We totally get it. But I did. I felt that. I was like, yeah, I could go home and go to sleep right now. But I had to go back and continue working. I want to know where Leslie and Faith are. And if... They picked up the phone today. Do you think that any of that, either one of those ladies or one of them could be our future golden bachelorette, but do you think there's any going back for those top three, the the ladies in the top three to Gary? I don't. I mean, we've seen, we've seen it happen in bachelor history. We talked about that in the last episode where guys have changed their minds and gone back to the one that they maybe should have chosen to begin with. But I don't know, maybe that ship has sailed because so much time has passed. Gina, do you think? No, I don't think so at all. Because here's the thing. If it really is, if what it is, is really about location, none of those, none of them Mm -hmm. are in Indiana. So it's, I think that's a lot of the reason why, like it was a, if I'm remembering the, the, the conversations correctly, that was a lot of the reason why faith was not his person. You know, that's why they didn't work out is because she wasn't right. She wasn't going to move. And so Mm -hmm. she was happy. She's very happy with her life and, you know, where she is. And so it's difficult. You know, I, you know, I I think about it all the time. There were a lot, there were some rumors out there, not a rumor, like Bachelor Nation speculating, like, oh, now is this going to be, Teresa's going to be the golden bachelorette? I don't think so. I I don't think so. Um, I think to me, I think it's Leslie. Um, that's just, I don't have any knowledge, you know, no one has spilled any tea for me, but even after she threw that bomb on poor Kelsey, I know, but I I don't, (laughs) I don't, I know, I know, but I think that, you know, to be fair though, that was taped long before any golden bachelorette talks or anything had happened. True. True. But I feel like to me, I think that she would, you know, she's going to make a dynamic bachelor, you know, golden bachelorette. I think she would. Sorry. She, I don't know for sure. Um, but I don't think, I don't know that Teresa would want to jump back into this. I just, my, just my, um, my gut instinct, you know, is to say, eh, Maybe this yeah, and especially right because she's literally, they're not even officially divorced yet. So I feel yeah, like the perfect. timing there would be bad, too. I exactly. Mean, she's straight exactly. out of the courtroom, right back job. onto uh, the Straight out of the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. no. She's still working, too. She's not retired, yeah. last I checked. So, you know, yeah, she's, she, she already has a day job. She is still working. She's very involved in her family, which is great. Um, I don't know that she would you know, would, would, would do it. I don't think she would. Um, but that's just me thinking out loud. Well, listen, and that's obviously one of the things we've talked about, uh, at length on our podcast about who the next golden bachelorette is going to be. Uh, I think they should still go with a bigger name, but I guess you could argue that the women who were on the golden bachelor, uh, have already endeared themselves to bachelor nation. So there's something to be said about that as well. Um, But before we wrap up this conversation about the Golden Bachelor and and Gary and Teresa not working out, I want to play the soundbite of Gary and Teresa saying that despite everything that's happened and the decision that they've made, they are still in love. I still love this person. There's no doubt in my mind. I still am in love with her. 
I root for her every day. And it's really a happy ending, guys. I mean, in the sense that, yeah, it didn't work out from a marriage standpoint. Um, but it's two people that care very much about each other and plan on supporting each other for the rest of their lives. And even if that means they go on to find love with someone else, that Gary and Teresa are still going to be there for each other. And at the end of the day, um, you almost wish that a lot of relationships that don't work out could still end up in that same fashion where you have someone championing, championing for you and cheering you on. And I think at the end of the day, maybe there's a lesson to be learned there as well. Okay. I think you're right. And I think that, you know, it was nice to see, like, they were still holding hands and you can't really fake that because I know if I were Teresa and I was like ticked off at Gary for breaking my heart or something behind the scenes, I wouldn't be holding his hand. <laughs> I would sit there, but I wouldn't hold his hand. So, you know, I think, uh, I think it's nice that they were able to at least part with a good friendship. Absolutely. I think, you know, look, I think the good thing about being their age, the age that they are is they do have the maturity to start and stop relationships in a way that is respectful and meaningful. And, um, you know, I do feel like they will be friendly and their families will be friendly and, you know, they have shared a bond, you know, this, this last these last nine months, maybe more, um, you know, has been something very special for all of them. And, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully they all find their happiness after this, but I do feel like they'll probably be a part of their life, you know, each other's lives. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. A couple other things. Uh, they did sign a prenup and they did recommend that most married couples or before they get married, do the same and, and have a prenuptial agreement, which uh, was interesting. Teresa did say she's going to give the ring back. Uh, the three and a half carat uh, Neil Lane special. Uh, I think should we they give have the ring? to. Yeah, they have to. I think they have. I think they have to. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's in the rule book, if you will. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she's going to give the ring back. Uh, and now we wait to see what's going to happen with the Golden Bachelorette. And Jen, we have a very special guest coming up from our very most recent season of The Bachelor, Joey season. That's right, Rachel. Gina's favorite lady i would want to say i think she you were probably the biggest fan of her out of out of all of us and we were fans but you were the biggest fan out of the three of us of rachel because i She's saw it i you know what i mean like like i said you know we've we've talked about it many times you know i feel like she got gypped because there was a lot of there was a connection there which we saw at the very end we didn't see all the things leading up to it so i do um i can't wait to chat with her about all of that, about her experience, about post bachelor life, all of the all of the things. She has a lot of questions, mostly from Gina, that she needs to answer. <laughs> you guys can just sit this one out. Happened. We'll just chat. It'll be great. <laughs> Gina's not going to let us get a word in edgewise with Rachel because they're going to become besties. I'll you know, be like, those two didn't see it. <laughs> you, you and I can just take that podcast off, Jen. I'm just going to we can just sit back and watch Gina do all the work. So wait great. a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to know what I will be doing is taking the bus and driving it and just right over you guys. <laughs> hey! I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do have, that. I love you guys. We have no <laughs> doubt about that. Uh, and because I'm still very much in vacation mode, uh, I do not have it in front of me. When is she coming on? It's next week, right? Yes. Jen? Monday, April 22nd. Great. So we'll have a fresh uh, playing the field pod. For our audience and listeners next week. Uh, in the meantime, we're still going to be shaking our heads about what happened with the Golden Bachelor. Everyone dissect. Tell us digest. your thoughts. Digest. Tell us yeah. your thoughts. Tell me. We tell still us have other happy think. couples. There's still yeah. others. <laughs> Many of whom were at their wedding uh, on January 4th. Yep. That's true. Some of our favorites from Bachelor Nation. Uh, but it unfortunately did not work out with Gary and Teresa. But that just gives us plenty more to talk about in terms of what happens next with the Golden Bachelorette. We have Rachel coming up next week. Uh, thank you guys so much for being with us. Jen and Gina, I'm Ryan. We'll see you all next week on another episode of Playing the Field.